So this module is about uh, 60 gigahertz millimeter wave. There are two logos here, Y gig and Y HD. We'll talk about those two. And then there's a picture of people doing very high speed transmission to their TV, playing some games at very high speed. That's what you get. And um, so 60 gigahertz frequency allocation, 60 gigahertz standards. And then we will talk about two of these standards, 11AD and wireless HD. And then I want to take you through a trip through this OFDM parameters simply because I want you to understand how to read them, how to read, you know, the, these parameters because when we go to LTE and other things, similar things that appear. So 60 gigahertz frequency allocation. So if you remember the spectrum, you know, from 30 cycles to whatever, right? There is 60 gigahertz frame. So in North America, FCC gave 57 to 64. 57 to 64. In Korea gave the same thing. In Japan, they gave 59 to 66. And in EU, they gave from 57 to 66. Why different countries give different? Because these are all new allocations. They might have given these previously for some military thing you know, which they cannot get rid of very fast. Or even for academy, not military, civilian things even. So that's an important use for different countries. So these are all new allocations. 60 gigahertz. They call 60 gigahertz because it is close to 60. Right? So if you want to make a worldwide <coughs> equipment, you really have, you are limited to 59 to 64. Right? And that gives you about 5 gigahertz in my calculation. But somehow I say you get 4 channels of 2 gigahertz. Um, 59, 60, 4 channels of 2 gigahertz each. Okay, anyway, I don't know how. But anyway, so the idea is. Previously, each channel was 20 megahertz, actually 5 megahertz. You know, the channel was, numbering was 5 megahertz, and then you went, you know, combined 4 of them to make 20, and now they're combining 4 of them to make 80, and then 8 of them to make 160. Similarly, they start with 2 megahertz. And, um, and 2 megahertz, obviously, if you do the dumbest thing, which is DPSK, one bit per hertz or half bit per whatever, you know, very simple thing, you get a lot of gigabits. You don't have to work very hard to get gigabits out of gigahertz. Right? So that's what is happening. And by the way, it is called millimeter because the wavelength is millimeter. Okay, so let's see, let's see the wavelength. So if you are at 300 megahertz, it's like 30 megahertz, the wavelength is 10 meter. And if you are at 3 mega, 3 gigahertz, so 2.4 is right there, just below it, the, the wavelength is 10 centimeter at 3, here it was 12 centimeter. Remember in one of the exercises we calculated for 2.4 gigahertz, it was 12.5 centimeter, which is 1.25 decimeter, you know, whatever, right? So that was the decimeter wave. And um, 5.8 of this centimeter wave, and anything more than 30 and less than 300 is millimeter. 30 gigahertz is, is 10 millimeter, and 300 gigahertz is 1 millimeter. All right? If 300 is 1, how much is 60 gigahertz? So what is the ratio of 60 and 300? 5, right? So 5 millimeter, right? And the multiplication of the wavelength to the frequency is equal to the speed of light. So you multiply 5 by 60, you get 300 meters per microsecond, which is the speed of light. So that's another way. But anyway, 5 millimeter wave we are going to use, right? This is what I call the millimeter wave transmission. Now the advantage of 5 millimeter, you know how much is 5 millimeter? This much. You know how long in dinner you need half of that. Half wavelength antenna. 
separation between the internal you know half wavelength you know it's it's very good <laughs> if you want to make a tiny thing all right so fcc put some limits and the limits are indicated here on this slide they put a limit on eirp eirp stands for equivalent isotropically radiated power so they say they don't they basically what they're saying is that we stand some place and we find out how much power you are getting okay and then we assume that you are sending that power everywhere you are not sending everywhere because of course you you will need a lot of battery but we assume that you are going to send it everywhere so how much power you would need to send so that i get that much that is a limit that is a limit on the eirp so us canada said that you cannot talk in more than 27 dbm and eirp of 43 dbm okay you need to have both the limits you have to obey the both the limits right that means that suppose the uh, uh, suppose you have internal resistance dd if suppose you have um, an internal resistance 30 dbi Uh, there is the dbi don't forget that dbi we, we we actually defined it dbi was decibel isotropic okay that was the antenna gain antenna gain is always measured in dbi we talk about dbm and db and dbi is isotropic it's just same thing as db but it just applies to antenna so um so if you have a um you transmit 30 db m you transmit 30 dbm But you have an antenna which has a gain of 33 dB i. 33 dB i antenna, right? A real big antenna, and you are transmitting only 10 dB, and that is 43. Because the look like this, most of it is going in one direction. If you if you would have from the 43 dB M, and it was going in all the direction, and your antenna was just straight forward zero dB I, then you will get that power, right? So 43 means that your antenna gain plus transmitted power should be less than 43, and your transmitted power should be less than 27 dB M. I mean, so generally, I mean, basically depends upon if you have 27 dBm, then how much gain can you have in the antenna? 16 dBi, right? And that is kind of minimum. If you have anything less than that, you are not using your full allocation. You can still do that. The government will not complain that you are not using. But that is kind of you know becomes normal. Everybody will have 16 dBi antenna, and um, and then hopefully they can transmit 27, maybe not. Japan put the limit at. Um, 58 Korea put the limit at 27 which is very low and so on if you want to see about this this is a book that is very good and explain all this so you understand the rules right these are all fcc rules and um, and as usual most of these things start from the united states they make the rules and then other countries follow And they try to make as good as possible, but this, they cannot achieve sometimes. So now, because the antennas are so small, you can put lots of them on a chip. Okay. So first of all, what is the advantage of 60 gigahertz? First is that the spectrum is large. You have such a by seven gigahertz band in the United States, at least seven gigahertz. So with a lot of band, you can give a lot of things to everybody. And if you want to do seven gigabits, all you need is very simple GPSK, one bit per head. And if you do, I mean, you don't need all this complex, complex stuff. A small antenna separation, five millimeter wavelength, and um, so five by four, EMR by four is the separation, 